Hello everybody, my name is Sarah and welcome back to Educating Adventures. Today we are going to be talking about a group of animals known as cetaceans. And if you don't recognize that word, let me give you a little hint about who we'll be discussing today. Cetaceans are a group of mammals that we find in the ocean. Some of them can be really big. In fact, one of them is the biggest animal in the world. And they usually breathe through a very unusual nose on the top of their head that we call a blowhole. That is right. If you guess that we were talking about a whale, a dolphin, or a porpoise, you are exactly correct. So we are going to get started learning all about cetaceans. Let's get into it. Like we just mentioned, whales, dolphins, and porpoises are all belonging to a group that we call cetaceans. Scientists estimate there's about 90 species of cetaceans, and we find most of them in the world's oceans. Cetaceans are fully aquatic, which means they never leave the water. We find them in many different types of environments. Like we said, we usually find them in the ocean. Some species prefer to hang out in the open ocean. Other species prefer to hang out in shallower waters. And some species migrate. They move back and forth between different types of ecosystems. While most species are found in the ocean, there are a couple very special species that can live in fresh water, and we call those species river dolphins. Cetaceans are divided into two groups, the toothed whales and the baleen whales. Let's start with the toothed whales. The toothed whales, as you guessed it, are our cetaceans that have actual teeth. All dolphins, all porpoises, and many other species like sperm whales, beluga whales, orcas, all of these animals are considered toothed whales. While toothed whales are named for their teeth, baleen whales are named for their baleen. Baleen whales are going to be our filter feeding whales and they're named for the structures that they have in their mouth that kind of look like fine bristles. We call them baleen and baleen is what they use to filter feed. When these whales are feeding, they open up their giant mouths. They take in a big mouthful of water and any little organisms. And then when they close their mouth, they can squish all the water out through that baleen and all the food gets trapped inside. Humpback whales, blue whales, bowhead whales, all of these species are considered baleen whales. Regardless if cetaceans have teeth, or baleen, we typically consider cetaceans carnivores, meaning they're meat eaters. Our toothed whales are going to be eating fish, squid, octopuses, other organisms like that. Our baleen whales, remember, are eating tiny food. So they could be eating tiny crustaceans like krill. They could be eating fish eggs or crab larvae. And they sometimes will eat phytoplankton, which is an algae, not an animal. But we do typically consider them to be carnivores. Because cetaceans are mammals, and they're also fully aquatic, they have to have all sorts of adaptations to help them live this aquatic lifestyle. Like all mammals, Cetaceans are warm-blooded or endothermic, and this means they can regulate their own body temperature. They can produce their own heat. They do typically have a layer of blubber, which is like a thick layer of fat over their body, and that does help to keep them warm, even though they're endothermic. Also, for mammals, we breathe air, right? And when you live your life underwater, it can be kind of hard to breathe. So cetaceans have developed the adaptation of having their nose on the top of their head. We call it a blowhole. And this allows them to break just above the surface of the water to take in a big breath of air, and that allows them to breathe. Our toothed whales, their blowhole is only one hole, but our baleen whales 
have two holes, kind of like our nostrils. We usually picture mammals having hair or fur as well, and while we don't usually picture dolphins and whales with a full head of hair like us, when they're born they do typically have just a couple sparse hairs over their body, which they tend to lose as they get older. Cetaceans are known for being highly intelligent as well, and this helps them do lots of things. Of course it helps them to hunt. It also helps them form very complex social groups. When our cetaceans are living in a group, we typically call them a pod of dolphins or a pod of whales, and their high level of intelligence allows them to establish relationships with different members of their group. This high level of intelligence also allows them to migrate. Many species of cetaceans will travel from the poles to the tropics during different parts of the year for breeding or for finding food. You have to be pretty smart to travel across the entire ocean. Some of our toothed whales take it one step further by having an extra special ability, an extra special sense that we call echolocation. Animals like dolphins and belugas and sperm whales, they have a body part called a melon. Yes, like a watermelon, but a little bit different. And their melon is used to funnel sound. So dolphins can send out a sound into their environment and when that sound bounces back to them, it allows them to build a map in their head of what's around them. It can tell them how far away something is, if anything in their area is moving, perhaps some prey. So echolocation can be used to navigate and hunt and for all sorts of other important reasons. I think many of us love cetaceans because they're fascinating and playful and interesting, but unfortunately cetaceans are threatened and this is a big problem for more than just we like them. Cetaceans are really important for the ocean ecosystem. They're important predators, they keep prey species in check, and some species particularly our large species, are really important for depositing nutrients into the ocean. And while they do this with their poop, when they poop dozens and dozens of gallons at a time, that has nutrients in it that tiny plants can use to grow and then those plants become food for other animals and that allows the ocean food web to continue and be healthy. Who knew whale poop was so important? Unfortunately, like I said, cetaceans are heavily threatened by us. There are things that we can do every day to protect cetaceans. We can eat sustainable seafood. We can reduce the amount of garbage that we make because a lot of times that garbage ends up where cetaceans live. And you guys can also visit your local aquariums particularly if they are donating or doing any conservation work to help cetaceans in the wild. All right, you guys, that was a lot of amazing cetacean information. I hope you guys feel like cetacean experts. If you wanna test your knowledge, be sure to check out our Educating Adventures website for quizzes, activities, projects, and so much more. And I hope we see you guys next time at our next adventure. Thank you.